Even though many refer to this as Muhammad splitting the moon, uh, the actual belief is that Allah split the moon for Muhammad. Which is pretty much the only miracle that Muhammad ever performed, but weirdly not seen by any other people except Muslims. Considering that it was early at night, the moon would have been visible in these areas. Let's look at all the witness records now. Yeah. Only words of some Muslims in Arabia. Some Muslims claim that there is actually an Indian witness and, and that the witness traveled to Arabia and converted to Islam. But it is, as you can guess, completely fabricated because it is completely baseless, has no evidence whatsoever. If some great event like this happened, like the moon splits, then surely people in other parts of the world would have seen it. Well, um, first thing, it is unrealistic to expect that people would have seen it in the daytime, right? Because we can't see the moon in the daytime. So if it was the early part of the night, obviously this wasn't midnight or 2, 3 a.m. because uh, then people would have been asleep in those days. In the early part of the night, if the moon split, when the people are out, that means that in parts of North America and South America and Europe, it is unrealistic to expect them to have seen it. Although if you go way back into Japan and Fiji and these areas, then it would have been very, very late. So most people would have been sleeping. But where is it likely that somebody could have seen it other than Arabia? Well, there could have been reports, no doubt, out of places like India. It would still be, you know, the earlier part of the night. So... Why don't we have any reports from there? Well, we do. In the book called Qissatul Shakruti Farmat, um, which is a, in a manuscript format, the actual handwritten manuscript uh, in the British Library. So there is such a manuscript. But can you say this was a first-hand account? Can you say this is a historically acceptable account? So what I did is I reached out to the National Digital Library of India. Uh, according to their email, they said there are numerous oral and written traditions that state that Chiraman Purmal, the Chira king, who ruled from 621 to 640, and again, that would put him exactly at the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him's uh, early time. Uh, and his observation of the splitting of the moon and later embracing Islam, then this is well documented in many manuscripts that are housed in the National Digital Library of India. My colleague and uh, dear friend Scott Kugel and I would like to share some thoughts about the connection between this painting and a foundation story of Islam's arrival to India. As you see here on the slide, the exhibition catalog identifies the figure in the painting tentatively as a saint, poet, or ruler. The author points to the split moon motif. Now the text. The two extant manuscripts, both of them are uh, in the British Library that contain our text. So this king, whom the text identifies as Shakarwati Farmad, and here, Shakarwati uh, really is the Arabized version of uh, the title Chakravarti. And as we will see, again, I'll leave this to Scott to uh, show you a little more on this. As Roxani was explaining to us, that's an Arabic rendition of the name Ch uh, Ch Chakravarti Charaman Perumal. Of course, the Arabs can't say P or O, these Indian sounds, so they translated as Faramad. But it's it's fairly easy for somebody who knows um, uh, Sanskrit and Malayalam to, to see the underlying name. We can also look not only for texts, but for material traces of this Indian king. And in the next slide, you'll see an actual building. The earliest mosque in India was in Malabar. It's called the Cheraman Perumal Mosque. It was built in 629 CE, very early. Um, if we see on the next slide that the architecture has changed considerably into the modern era, you can see uh, on the gateway, Cheraman Juma Masjid, the name has stayed the same. The site, we can say, is the oldest mosque site in India. 